Jordan's research on a prospective Palestinian state assumes two states living side by side in peace and security. For the purpose of analysis, Rand also assumed that the Palestinian state would be comprised of two parts based on the pre-1967 borders. The land area would be relatively small, but the population is expected to grow quickly to more than six million people. The large population in a small area means that Palestine's population density would be exceptionally high. The land will require careful planning to create a sustainable living environment. Gaza is extremely crowded and will not be able to absorb many more residents. Most of the new population will need to be absorbed in the larger West Bank, whose cities can absorb at least three million new people at moderate densities. The closeness of the cities will allow them to function as an integrated region similar in scale to a region like San Francisco Bay. The cities are located in complex terrain that is often steep and hilly. The curved line of the mountain ridges forms a natural arc in the landscape which could link the cities together. But the existing roads are inadequate for a modern state. The Ark is a public infrastructure corridor which ties the cities of the West Bank together and links the West Bank to Gaza. It could help a Palestinian state succeed. The Ark corridor would include a fast train connecting Rafah in southern Gaza to Jenin in the northern West Bank, in just over 90 minutes of travel. On the outskirts of each city, the Ark centers on a new train station surrounded by a modern business district. The historic center of each city would be revitalized, with shops, restaurants, hotels, and cultural centers, and linked to the train station district by a new boulevard, which has rapid transit serving a series of new neighborhoods, each with housing, schools, markets, and parks. The Ark and its lateral boulevards would place a majority of Palestine's 6 million population within walking distance of public transport, creating a sustainable framework for growth and prosperity. The Ark corridor would also contain other essential infrastructure like telecommunications lines, a toll road primarily for freight, lines for electricity from wind and sun, natural gas lines, and facilities for moving and storing water. The Ark would create a single economic space, allowing Palestinians to access jobs and education. The Ark would connect Palestine's people and goods to the outside world through trade via roadway, airport, and seaport. The Ark would also help build the infrastructure for tourism, an important part of a modern economy, especially around the Mediterranean. And Palestine's natural environment would be protected from overbuilding by preserving agriculture and open space with a new national park along the Ark Corridor. If you were flying over the West Bank, here is how the Ark might appear, and here is how it might look in a city such as Nablus. The Ark Corridor and train station are located outside the existing city center, but connected by the Transit Boulevard. The boulevard is built first, followed by national infrastructure within the Arc Corridor. Along the boulevard, complete new residential districts help absorb the growing population. Around the train station, a new business district develops, 
as the historic city center is revived. The old city and new districts merge to form a single metropolis, with public transport in walking distance of nearly everyone. An industrial zone near the station offers easy access for employees and goods. Finally, the National Linear Park provides facilities for sports and recreation. The ARC focuses on improving the quality of life for all Palestinians. Throughout history, infrastructure has helped other nations prosper, with large projects comparable in scope and scale to the ARC. Rand has estimated that it would cost about $9 billion to build the core elements of the Ark. Building those elements could create as many as 160,000 jobs per year in the first five years. The Ark could begin now, immediately putting people to work in the planning and construction of practical projects, which would serve as building blocks to be joined together in later phases. These projects would address the poor transport facilities and limited mobility faced daily by Palestinians. Today, in Palestinian towns and cities, basic problems such as poor pedestrian safety, traffic congestion, and inadequate shelter often exacerbate the ordeal of getting to school or work. These problems can be alleviated with very feasible short-term projects on a demonstration basis. Within 12 months, improved bus stops and transportation centers in multiple locations could provide comfort and dignity to public transport. Within 24 months, new buses and rapid transit routes could offer faster, more comfortable service for travel within and between cities. And within 36 months, transport improvements could enhance the quality of life in neighborhoods while encouraging the construction of much-needed new housing. Larger projects such as intercity bus stations at the edge of several cities could later be converted to train stations along the line of the arc. These practical first steps are held together by a vision of a future Palestinian state. That vision has been warmly received by many Palestinians and others in the region. It can provide a blueprint for physical improvements and offer tangible tools for diplomacy in search of peace. For more information, please visit rand.org slash Palestine.